Hey, what's up guys? RJ here, back with another video. This week we're going to look at how to manipulate an SDL file in Fusion 360. Now it all started back on Father's Day when my wife surprised me with a very cool gift. A aerial photography platform, aka drone. And uh, specifically a DJI Phantom 3 standard. I think she picked this up at uh, BJ's Wholesale Club. And uh, the gimbal, it comes with a uh, gimbal lock that um, is kind of difficult to use. So I went on Thingiverse to see if anyone had designed a better brace for the gimbal. And uh, Sure enough, there are several out there. One in particular I liked was for the uh, Pro and Advanced series. Now, I have the Standard series, so it didn't quite fit. So we're going to take that SDL file, move it into Fusion 360. I'm going to show you how to manipulate that pretty easily to make it work for your needs. All right, without further ado. Okay, so let's fire up Fusion 360. So once this is loaded, the first thing you want to do is you want to come over to the top node in the tree, right click, and you want to do not capture design history. Hit continue. And what this will allow us to do is use the insert menu to insert a mesh. So Again, I'll back up, click on insert, select insert mesh, double click on the file that you want to use, the STL file you want to manipulate. The next thing you're going to see is a unit type option. And I know that this um, model was designed in millimeters. So it's important for you to, to know how the original STL model was designed. My understanding is that there, there is no dimensional data in an STL file, or at least uh, that Fusion 360 can read. So you have to choose and, and tell Fusion which um, unit of measurement was used for the original design. So in this case, I know that it was millimeters, so select millimeters, hit OK. And there's our model, our STL file, in Fusion 360. Now, I like to use components. So the first thing I usually do is right-click here, Create Components from Bodies, and then I activate it. Uh, and, and that allows you to narrow down your timeline to, uh, to do a lot of things, but that's not really the focus of this. So... From here, what we need to do is we need to right-click over the model and you need to convert this mesh to BREP. So select that. And then from here, we want a new body because we're already in our components. Select OK. And there is our BREP model of the STL file, which we can manipulate. Now, you'll see what happens when you do that the uh, Fusion automatically turns the mesh body off and turns the BREP body on. So as you can see, there are tons of faces uh, on, in this model. And really, before you can manipulate a face, well, easily manipulate a face, you need to, in some cases, remove uh, some of these faces, these extra faces. So for instance, I need, I know that in my updated model for this, the standard um, drone, I need to manipulate this section here. And I need to remove these. So one of the things I want to do is I want to get rid of some of these faces so I can work with a solid model. So, and I'm sure there are easier ways to do this, but this is how I do it. I just go in and grab a face and hit the delete key on the keyboard. Now, as luck would have it, that cleaned up 
all the extra faces on this main face. So that was easy. Now, in the case of this area, I've got to get rid of these faces also. So I'm just going to select one of these. And again, as luck would have it, it cleaned all these extra faces off. I know I need to get rid of these. So I will go ahead and delete these faces. All right. So now I have this area that I need to get rid of, these extra faces. So I'll just pick here and start deleting each one until I reduce to one. And there we go. Because when I um, manipulate this model, I need clean faces to make it much, much easier uh, to, to make that manipulation. So once I've cleaned up the areas that I need uh, to manipulate, the next thing I want to do is I want to turn back, turn back, I want to turn history back on. So I want to right click on the top node again, and I want to capture design history. And what this will allow us to do is, as we make changes to the model, we're in parametric mode, so if we make a mistake or if a design has to change, we can easily go back and make that the change. So that's it. You just simply clean up the area and manipulate the, the faces that you need manipulating. So I'll go ahead and just um, manipulate this side. I know I need this whole section pretty much gone. To about there so so there's probably again many ways to do this but this is how I did it I just right clicked I created a sketch on this face and I used my line tool clicking the L key on the keyboard just started making the area where I need to get rid of This one's a little tricky. All right, let's see if that worked. Okay, that didn't quite work. I didn't I didn't get a line in here. So what I need to do is connect this with this. So hit the L key again, select, select, and we should have it. So as you can see, this is not going to work. Well, it could work. We could, we could select both and extrude, but we can also get rid of this by selecting this line. And as you can see, remove these lines so we should be able to easily uh, extrude away the area that we don't want so once we've done that we just right click uh, select the extrude and in this particular case i'm just going to extrude it back and remove seven millimeters select ok and there you go same with if you need to add to a face, for instance, say this edge needed to come up a little, I could just select this edge and I think I can just use uh, put the push pull. And let's see, yep. And if I need to add 0.5, add 0.5 and we're done. So now extrusion extrusions are time framed. Pushing and pulling on a face, however, is not. So I would I would always recommend using um, the extrusion method of um, adding to or removing from a face, because that way you can go back. So for instance, say this this wasn't enough. I needed to remove a little more. So all I need to do is go back in the timeline, double click, and 
can easily make those changes. So and there you go. So that's it. That is how to import an SDL file into Fusion, convert it to a BREP, and manipulate it to your heart's content. From there, you just you can simply right click on the component, save as STL file, and save it off and print it. And there you go. So that's it guys, pretty straightforward to get an SDL file into Fusion 360 and to manipulate it. I personally prefer Fusion 360 over say a program like Tinkercad. I think that Fusion offers a little more control, a little more detail uh, in the manipulation of it. So, um, so yeah, special thanks to Midland Jack, who is the original designer of the gimbal lock. He designed it for the Pro and I believe the Advanced. I believe those two drones share the same camera and gimbal. But the standard is different. So I'd contacted him asking him for permission to um, remix his uh, Pro design so that it would fit the uh, standard. And he was gracious enough to, to give me that permission. Uh, so I, I thank you very much, uh, Jack. So here is the finished product of course with a, a little bling added and it's pretty easy to use due to Jack's great design so basically you just take it and carefully put it over the camera body and at the same time over the top of the gimbal and then just slide it on and there you go protects your gimbal assembly and your camera lens works great so that's about it guys hope you all are having a great summer we're about what halfway through for those of you who are in the heat stay cool all right guys until next time take care